Sean is still thinks we care about her family life or her kids. Febreze is back and we don't know why she's back. Evelyn is already crying and trying to pretend like she's not a colorist. Malaysia is weak and ridiculous as fuck. And Jackie is already playing defense. Already. I'm already over these bitches already. Let's get into it. What's going on, y'all? This be your boy, Scotty by Nature, and we're here for another review of The Basketball Wives, Season 9, Episode 1, okay? Now, we already know that um, we had a tumultuous Season 8, okay? Like, that was the most my channel ever grew, some of the biggest um, views I ever got, okay? And I'm just gonna let you guys know something right now. I got a lot of blowback from doing my Real Housewives of Potomac videos. And after I got all of that major blowback from that, I decided that I'm gonna not use the word bitch so much. But I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I'm gonna use it every which way when it comes down to the basketball wives. Why? Because I have no respect for these girls. Like, none. So if you don't like the word bitch, I'm sorry. This is not the review for you. Just watch my other damn videos. Because the word bitch gonna be used quite a bit. This season, I can already tell. So let's get right on into it. Now, before COVID hit, these girls were just living their regular lives. Malaysia, you know, as usual, talking to her children on FaceTime, never being around them. Um, Shawnee, as usual, showing her kids as if we give a damn about them. But uh, one of her daughters are going to LSU and she's going to play basketball and all of this other stuff. And, you know, Shawnee moving to Houston and all this other stuff, whatever. Who gives a damn? Um, but that was pretty much the justice of it. Oh, and Jackie playing basketball with her son and, you know, acting like she ain't got, you know, another child, all this other stuff. You know, the usual. That's what they were doing. For Bree, comes over to um Eveline's house. That's what she does. She comes over there and um for whatever reason we're discussing Furby and her love life as if we give a damn about her love life. Now apparently she's dating some man that she'd been dated a long time ago and um they have a history like I said already and you know she just don't know what she's doing don't, doesn't know where to turn she doesn't really trust him she's just scared to be in his space. Um Eveline as what Terrence would call her Eveline says that she just feels like Frisbee always runs away from her problems and she just, in you know, Frisbee has become her little sister, aka her little slave, her little ass kisser. That's what she's become. And she just want to look out for her well-being and just push her in the right direction. You know, and of course, of course, Eveline is on this new journey of, you know, growth and, you know, prospering and, you know, getting baptized in the name of, of, of Jesus and all this other stuff. Girl, bye. No one cares and no one cares and no one believes you. You need more people, bitch. That's what you need because nobody believes none of this shit you doing. See, this is what kills me with basketball wise. Y'all act a fool the same way y'all did on season four when Evelyn jumped across the table. When Evelyn hit um, Jennifer in the head with a purse. When Tammy bullied the hell out of Keisha. When Evelyn threw a bottle of wine and a plate at Kenya Bill. After y'all show the fuck out like that. Y'all come back the next season and y'all want to rejuvenate and be a more positive set of women and try to figure out what went wrong. I can already see that this is what the hell y'all finna do right now. And I ain't buying it. I ain't buying out one drop of the bullshit. I ain't drinking none of the goddamn Kool-Aid. You bitches don't fool me. Y'all do this every fucking time y'all show out and get in hell and hot water and be drugged all over the damn blogosphere. I'm gonna keep dragging you bitches because I don't respect y'all for the way y'all acted. I'm gonna keep dragging you motherfuckers. I don't give a damn what y'all do to try to fix y'all image up. There's nothing you can do to fix it. Nothing. And speaking of fixing images, Evelyn starts crying. When she talks about the situation with OG and how she would never use that that chimpanzee emoji to describe any woman or any race and she called me a racist and she's doing all of this for attention and people are threatening my life and people are doing this girl shut the fuck up with all this goddamn crying shut up you fake ass bitch just shut the fuck up you wanna know why you need to shut the fuck up cause you crying about people threatening other folks lives haven't you done it numerous of times haven't you done it 
So now you get a taste of your own fucking medicine. You don't know how to fuck the egg. Girl, shut the fuck up. You know what the fuck you were doing. You know exactly what the hell you were doing. Talking about you not a racist girl. You know exactly what the fuck you were doing. You called CC fucking Ling Ling. You, you, you used a chimp to describe OG. I don't care what you said you did. When you know that you were talking about that girl, you should have used something other than a chimpanzee gift. That's what you should have done, but you knew exactly what the hell you were doing, and because everybody been upholding you and your bullshit for so many years, you thought that you could get away with it. Newsflash, bitch! You can't get away with it. We in a whole damn different climate these days. There's some things that you cannot say or do. Uh, that was one of the things that you can't do, bitch. So, you're gonna have to sit in there and dwell on it if you want to. Don't nobody give a fuck about your colorist racist ass, okay? That's what it is. I can't stand Evelyn, y'all. Like, that bitch did a whole lot last season and I just can't get with it. So, she's gonna forever be a bitch to me. So, all of you motherfuckers that's gonna come up under this video and tell me how derogatory the word bitch is, how I'm disrespecting and hate black women and all this other shit. I don't hate shit. Shut the fuck up. I don't like that bitch and I don't respect that bitch and no one else should. Fuck her and fuck you for and fuck the person who's probably gonna come up under my comments and say some shit to me about it. Fuck y'all. I'm here to drag these hoes like people want me to and that's what I'm here to do. And if you don't like it, bye! So apparently Shawnee is moving to Houston and apparently I don't give a fuck. Next! So Jackie and OG, they meet up and they have, you know, lunch and drinks and all this other stuff Um and all this you know, just just what they do. And all these reality shows meet up, have drinks, eat, and talk about bitches. That's how they do on these shows, Jack. So Jackie and OG talk about the Evelyn situation, and this conversation really pissed me off with Jackie. Jackie really be pissing me off, okay? I'm telling you why. As much as I love Jackie, as much as I've grown to love Jackie, let me just make that clear because back in the gap, I did not like Jackie. Back in the gap, I would drag Jackie for everything. But I grew to love her, and I know that this show won't be shit without Jackie. Let's be 100% clear on that. Now, when it comes down to Jackie, she always, like, straddles the fucking fence sometimes. She doesn't know where she stands on anything. And what I don't like is, she was sitting up here trying to, uh, basically tell OG that, you know, trying to invalidate OG's feelings about the colorist thing. Now, here's my thing. Now, I have my, um qualms about the colorist argument. Now, do I think that Evelyn is a colorist? I think that she could possibly be one. But when they were treating OG a certain way, I never got the I never got colorist from them, but I did get, you know, they treated her like they treated Tammy. Like they didn't, you know, because of her look or the way she dressed or all this other stuff. They thought she was ugly. They thought she couldn't dress. It was more of a mean girls type of thing because that's all I ever see them do to people. So I, the colorist thing never came across my mind. But who am I to discount somebody else's feelings? If OG felt like that was colorism at its best, then that is her right to feel that way. Jackie, who the hell are you to question it? You don't have a right to question shit. Okay? Especially being that you are, you have some, you know, alleged colorist, colorist tendencies of your own because your own daughter said that you treated her a certain type of way because she was dark skinned and because she weighed more than your other daughter did. And she said that you favored your other daughter. And you do. She just happened to be a light-skinned woman. Now, you know, I'm not saying you colorist, but your daughter said that you was. So you might want to shut the hell up when it comes down to this conversation instead of, you know, don't be trying to discount somebody else's feelings and stop trying to make folks get along and stop trying to make people talk because that's a situation that will probably never be rectified. Evelyn was fucked up, and that's just what it is. And you know, girl, Jackie, like, bye. So, Evelyn and Malaysia, they come together to give February some cooking lessons because when February was over Evelyn's house, February said that she don't know how to cook. Child, we don't care. Like, we really don't give a damn. And now they start discussing, um, Furby's relationship issues. Like, Shawnee Girl and whoever else is in production. Who t We already told you last season. That we didn't want caffeine-free Cardi B back on our screen. We had already told y'all that. So y'all decide to have this season for this season premiere be all giving us all this Furby mess when we don't like her. Period. I don't want to see this girl and I don't care about her relationship. Like the less we know about her, the better. Like fuck Furby. Don't nobody give a fuck about what she got going on. I don't give a fuck what her man do to her. Fuck her. Because she's a terrible person too. Fuck that bitch. We don't care about what she got going on. Let me move on, chat. 
So Jackie and Shawnee, they meet up, and Shawnee is very nervous to talk to Jackie because she's about to tell Jackie that she's leaving L.A. And um, she feels like Jackie's going to take it hard that she's leaving. So she winds up telling Jackie, and Jackie was like, oh my God, I'm going to cry, Shawnee. I cannot believe that you're leaving. Girl, Shawnee, not your damn friend. Like, ugh. She killed me sometimes. Like, girl... And then they started talking about OG, and Jackie was trying to get, you know, Shawnee to talk to OG. And Shawnee said that I feel like, um, you know, if she feels like there was colorism, then who am I to tell her that it wasn't? Great PR move, child. She making sure she's saying the right thing, the correct thing, the politically correct thing, so she won't be in hot water again. Bitch, I see you, and bye. But she says she's willing to have a conversation with OG if it's not confrontational. She already started with this confrontational, aggressive shit that she always pulls with OG. I see a master splinter. So Shawnee and Evelyn meet up with Liza, okay? Um, she's a Lamar Odom's uh, ex-girlfriend, his baby mama. And um, apparently she's moving back to L.A. and she's looking for a house. And, um, you know, the first person that Shawnee introduces this girl to is Evelyn. Like, that's going to be a great thing for this girl. Mm, okay. And so she starts talking about her, um, her kids and how they've grown up and how she feels like L.A. is the best place for them. And she's been going through a lot of things, especially with Lamar and everything that's been in the news and how her kids has been affected and I'm like this girl ain't been on the screen for two minutes and she's already spilling all the tea on Lamar and hey I'm here for all the tea child that's what we here for the reality shows for anyway we here for all the tea so child spill as much as you want to so OG and Kwame they go looking for bedding um they are building their new house and they're about to start furnishing the house. So, you know, OG starts talking about the lawsuit that Evelyn filed against her for defamation. Um, you know, she just feels like she doesn't know if this is a situation that could really be rectified at all. And I don't think that it can either because Evelyn really had the nerve to try to file a lawsuit for defamation against somebody when she pretty much put the image out there of her own that she's a colorist. She put that up there on her own that she's a racist. She did that on her own accord. So OG didn't have to say anything. All OG did was was put some validity to what the fuck she said. Like she's been getting away with doing this same bullshit for the longest and now that she meets someone that that you know that that's gonna go toe to toe with her, she can't never take it. She did the same thing with Royce and Brandy. Whenever somebody go toe-to-toe -to -toe with her ass, she can't handle it. Like, Evelyn can really go somewhere and sit down. And OG talking about she wants to have an understanding with Shawnee. Girl, bye. Like, what the fuck you need to have an understanding with Shawnee for? She ain't nobody to have no understanding with. If anything, the understanding was already there with the way she dismissed you and mistreated you all last season. So, I would not be trying to, you know, have no understanding with Shawnee O'Neal at all. But, at the end of the day... They always want to have an understanding with her because she's the boss, which is why she don't need to be on this fucking show. So Liza, Evelyn, and Malaysia, they go to this washer, and they're basically paying for these people's um, laundry and stuff like that. And I'm just looking at the TV, just rolling my eyes, because it's like this. There's nothing wrong with people doing this on reality TV. I have no issues with it, but it just feel, it doesn't feel genuine when they do the shit like that. Because you already know what the fuck we've been seeing from them since last season. They've been showing us nothing but negative shit and they're working overtime to make themselves look like they just do so good for the community and do so much for the community. Like, fuck out of here. You bitches don't do shit. Like, fuck out of here. Y'all just only doing this to make yourselves look good and to clean up y'all image. That's all the fuck y'all doing it for. It don't even look genuine at all. <laughs> like, girl, bye. Like, I ain't... Child, please. Then they start talking to Malaysia about making up with Jackie. And, you know, Malaysia really ain't got no reason not to like Jackie. All she could have did was talk to her about the issues, but instead she did not. She sat up there and she listened to everything that Kristen and Evelyn had to fucking say without talking to her own goddamn friend about it. Especially when Evelyn was a bitch that didn't even want her around and want her in that situation. So, Malaysia, is it's always fuck Malaysia for me. Like, I don't fuck with that bitch at all. Like, for real, for real. Because she really disappointed me with her damn rusted potato built ass. Fuck her. Oh, we see Febreze and her man. <laughs> So then Evelyn and Malaysia meet up for drinks five days before the COVID lockdown. And next thing you know, Jackie walks in. Jackie walks in very pleasant and Malaysia don't say nothing. She looks down at her phone. She can't deal with it. She walks away. And Jackie just sitting there. I feel like Jackie wanted to talk to Malaysia. And I feel like Jackie wanted to make things right with Malaysia. Because they did grow to have a great friendship. But instead, Malaysia decided to be a bitch and just walk out. 
Um, then she said that Jackie had a stank attitude and that how dare she walks in without her tail between her legs. Why does she need to have her tail between her legs, Malaysia? For what? Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? To, to have somebody, for you to want somebody to come in and be scared of your ass. Like, who the fuck is you? I don't understand who, who the hell you think you are. But ever since you got down with the clique with Shawnee and Evelyn, you really believe that you somebody, baby. And you ain't no goddamn body, okay? You only here because you kissing their ass, okay? That's what you got to understand, bitch. You a tag along. You a add-on. You mean nothing to them bitches. That's what you fail to understand. But instead, you want to sit up here and act like you somebody. Talk about Jackie. How dare she walk in without her tail between her legs? How dare she come in with a stank attitude? If anybody had a stank attitude, it was you. You the one who had the stank ass attitude. You the one who had the whole ass attitude and walked the fuck out instead of being a grown woman and facing the situation at hand. You the one with a problem. Jackie ain't got no problem with you. You got a problem because you decided to listen to some rumors that came from someone that you motherfuckers don't even know. That's you. You are the reason. That's all I'm saying. You are the reason. You are the reason. And you've been the reason from the very beginning. So fuck all that. Jackie crying about the coronavirus because she wants to throw something for Shawnee. And Shawnee's about to go on and leave um, LA right now because the virus is getting out of hand. And next thing you know, it's all over the news. So that's pretty much the first episode of the Basketball Wives this season. It was pretty mild and, and a lot didn't really happen this first episode. But I'm telling you why nothing happened so far. Because they're trying to clean up their image, child. This is supposed to be the redemption season, child. They're trying, to, they're trying to redeem themselves and look good for the people. That's what they're trying to do. And I ain't buying not one drop of it, okay? Not, not nothing. I ain't buying it at all. With that being said, you guys, I'm out of here. With that being said, be sure to follow me on all my social media. My social media is at the bottom, my Twitter and my Instagram. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video and do whatever you see fit. With that being said, I'm out of here, y'all. To my next video, I'll holler at you later. Peace out.